last financial workshop of 2012. So give yourself a hand for showing up tonight. Uh, at Stewart Financial Services, I have three functional areas, three things we focus on. One of them is protection, the other one is investing, safe investing, and then the other wheel is education. Well, tonight is all about education. And we firmly believe that if people know better, people would do better. It'll help you make better decisions as it relates to financial information. So we are excited to be here this evening. And I'm really excited because tonight we don't have to do as much. We have a featured speaker here tonight by the name of Chris Bridges. How many people think credit is very important? I mean, I mean, I know if we, if we're honest. I know when I was in college, if people used to come on campus and give our college student a credit card. We didn't have a job, and I didn't have sense enough to know if I charge something. I'm supposed to pay it back when the bill comes in. Anybody else feel that the same way? I mean, and you know, credit all messed up. We just weren't taught that information. So what we are trying to do is take away all the excuses as it relates to financial information, whether it's credit, uh, whether it's other numbers that also affect our life. And we're going to talk about all that tonight. And for those of y'all that may have been here before, you may have seen our tax-free retirement workshop. And uh, which is an awesome event. We can't give all of that to you tonight, but we're going to give you a little bit of it tonight. But we're here tonight, we're going to talk about uh, your credit and, and how all that ties into uh, restoration, credit management, and all that kind of stuff. We have an expert in the house tonight. So look at your neighbor and say, we have an expert in the house tonight. We have an expert in the house tonight. And her name is Chris Bridges. Uh, for those of y'all who have this, this is a bio. She's a national speaker, an author, or a coach committed to educating. And that's the big thing to me is commitment. You know, a lot of people do things, they get involved with things, but a lot of people are not committed to it. Well, she's committed, and we sought out to talk about what else are we going to do different in our work job. And we came up with credit. And I said, let me find somebody that knows what they're doing, that's totally committed to it, and that's Chris Bridges. But through her platform, Credit with Chris, she is dedicated to teaching about credit management through personal consultations, seminars, workshops, articles, and her blog. She is an author of uh, Your First Step to Credit, Rest credit Restoration. And I know the ladies gonna like this. He jacked up my credit, you know, what I mean? and the Queen's Legacy. Uh, she was recently named 2012 Legacy Professional Speaker from the Entrepreneur and Professionals Network, and her goal is to change generations by increasing credit scores one point at a time. Say one point at a time. One point, one point at a time. time. So she is a Prince George's County Ambassador for BNI. Uh, she graduated uh, magna cum laude from Strayer University with a Bachelor of Science in a Business Administration. I think that's important because I graduated, thank you, Laude. <laughs> <laughs> so, the kids graduated. Right, that's the main thing. Yeah. But I didn't graduate magna cum laude. But she is a wife and mother of five. Oh, wow. I mean, five. Wow. You know what I mean? And speaks from wow. personal experience. It's one thing to talk about things in logic, but when you can speak from personal experience, I think that goes a little deeper and overcoming obstacles, reaching the goals, and walking in her God ordained purpose. So, prior to starting a Vision Services LLC, she had senior positions in the corporate world. So, this ain't nothing that uh, uh, somebody just started. I mean, you got world experience in the corporate world as well as being an entrepreneur. She was also a chief operating officer. So, uh, Nirvana Morgan Services, which she ran with her husband. So y'all help me give it up for Miss Chris Bridges. I don't know who wrote that bio, but it sure sounds good. <laughs> uh, it, it's actually funny. I had to learn to. Uh, yeah, thank you. I don't ever mess up here. I had to learn how to pat myself on the back and give myself some credit, right? Uh, and I don't mean that literally. But I just want to really tell you guys how awesome you look to me tonight. Uh, just to come out and be a part, to, to be willing and open to hear what we have to share with you. I'm just really, really blessed to be a part of this evening. And I thank uh, you know my sponsors and my new friends for inviting me to come out and be a part of this event with you as well. Anytime that uh, God gives me a chance to be able to share, that is my mission. I am out here to generate an impact 
generations. Not just teach one person, but I want one person to teach one other person. Because I don't know about you guys, but my, my parents didn't tell me about prayer. And, uh, and my college education was after I had children, and I went back to school and figured now that I have to pay for it, I'm going to get AIDS. Right? Because some of y'all know when your parents pay for education, you play around. But um, I was a returning adult. Uh, with two small children at home, and so I, I had to pay for that, so I had to make sure I got everything I could get out of it. So that's why I, I graduated from college. But anyway, um, I am thrilled to be here again. I'm going to share with you all for about an hour. I am a speaker in my past profession. I used to be in sales. So you combine those two, that's dangerous for going over the time. Right? So I'm a salesperson who can speak. So you make sure that you keep me on track. I have a lot to share with you. I know some of you have already gone through your handout. And yes, there is a quiz in there. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to turn it in. That is more so for you. But we want to talk a little bit about what's going on in our community. Uh, I'm, I am going to ask if you have questions, there's no cheats in the very back. Um, of the of your handouts. And so just write those down. We may not get an opportunity to do it as I go through the presentation because I have a lot to share with you. But maybe you can see me afterwards or um, we'll follow up. But I want to make sure that I'm here to serve you and to answer any questions that you may have. Fair enough? Thank you. Okay. Now I am like a, a, a preacher or pastor at church. So if you guys look at me and start going to sleep because I know you just ate, <laughs> I'm going to get out of it. Right? So, uh, and if I stay on the subject because you all look at me with blank, you know, stares, I'm going to stay there because I want to make sure that you understand. So give me nods, give me some love, okay? And then we'll get through the night. Fair enough? Okay. How many of you have a driver's license with numbers on it? Okay. How many of you have a street address with numbers on it? How many of you have a social security number? Okay. So those are all numbers, right? How many of you have a credit score? Thank you. <laughs> well, you may or may not have a credit score, actually, so that's, that's not a true question. If you have not utilized credit in a while, you may not have a score. But most of us have some type of credit um, score. So I'm going to get started. I think this is the right button. All right, fantastic. So we've already done the intros. You've read my bio. You know what I'm here to talk about. I am a, a niche speaker. I'm going to teach you about credit like you've never heard it before. If I don't teach you something that you already didn't already know, then your ticket for tonight is free. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> Some of y'all got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get that when you go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's jump right in. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly? You're going to get twice. Yeah, yeah just got to kind of aim it at it a little bit. Oh, I was sitting wrong. But anyway, so, yeah. Practice makes perfect. Okay, what is credit? What is it? It's something that you, you pay, you get it today, you pay for it tomorrow, right? Credit really is your ability to borrow someone else's money, whether for real in trans, you know, transaction or paper to be able to get something that you want today and you pay for it tomorrow. That's, that's really what it is. There's a whole lot more to that. We're going to make it simple for tonight. Okay? Um, credit is also something that should be used wisely. Would you guys agree? Mm -hmm. So what my parents told me about credit, my father told me, pay your bills on time. And when I was in the corporate world and I made 50000 and I made 100000 and I made 200000 and I made 300000 and one year I made 400000 how many of y'all know it was easy to pay my bills on time? I could pay my bills, your bills, and hers if I wanted to, right? And I was doing that. So that was very easy. Pay your bills on time. That's all I knew about credit. You borrow something, you pay it back. It was simple. So in 2006, I had a six-year-old. You all know I had five children. <laughs> so let me tell you, so Anthony asked me earlier, what are the age of your children? They're 26, 24, 23, 21, and 6. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Oh, I do. See, that's the reaction I know. <laughs> Especially for the women. But, but let me tell you guys, my six-year-old is the love of my life. She was not, she was a gift of God, no doubt about it, because all children are kids. But she was not crept up on us, nor was she an accident. We paid for her. She cost me about $30,000. I'm trying to bring that child here. And so every day when I want to kill her, I have to remember. Because <laughs> you were an expensive baby. <laughs> so how many of you guys know that life changes, though? So I thought I would be right now an empty nester. I'm supposed to be an empty I am supposed to be an empty nester. <laughs> I have a six-year-old. So in 2006, I had this baby, and I realized, you know what? I've achieved my corporate ladder. I've done what I want to do, and now I want to come home because I didn't get a chance to do that with my boys. 
and I want to raise my daughter. And so my husband started a mortgage company. We know this is part of our mortgages. And so we started a mortgage company in 2007. I retired. So, y'all, I told y'all how much money I made in corporate America. Right? Mm -hmm. We started a mortgage company in 2006. Y'all doing the numbers? Mm -hmm. Years. Mm -hmm. So we ran a mortgage company for four years. We closed it down in 2010. So I became an entrepreneur. So quickly I had to learn uh, that there's something more than just paying your bills on time. There's something more about credit than just paying your bills on time. Because when you have money, it is directly affected by, credit is directly affected by your ability to pay. How many of y'all agree? Mm -hmm. Millionaires don't have credit problems. They pay somebody to make sure their stuff is paid on time. Right? But when our money changes, our income changes, any flow in that you know, changes is going to potentially affect our credit, right? So credit, again, is our ability to use or to get something today and pay for it tomorrow. How is credit evaluated? It's basically used to predict how well if you are if we're not going to pay it back. So if I came up to you all today, and Latanya, if I came up to you today and I said I want to borrow $100, but you don't really know me, right? What do you say in your mind? I don't have <laughs> to give? I'm just saying, had it to give. <laughs> what are you going to say? I'm going to say, are you working? Will you pay me back? When will you pay me back? You're going to be thinking about it. Yeah, I'm going to be thinking about it. You're going to be thinking about it. You might say, hmm, let me go ask Crystal if the last time Chris borrowed from her, she paid her back. Don't y'all do that when your family comes home? Y'all start wondering. That's what, our, that's what financial institutions and other lenders do. They do the same thing. They just do it on paper. They look at what the piece of paper, the credit report says, evaluates our risk factor. So they look at how well do we pay other people, or do we not pay other people you know, well. So then that will determine whether or not they're going to extend credit. It's really as simple as that. So who are these guys? You guys heard of them? You read, you can read, yeah, credit So they are not nonprofits. <laughs> they are not working for the Obama administration. Consumer <laughs> Right? They are billionaires. They are separate individual companies. They don't work together. They have some collaboration when it comes to products and services, but they're individual companies. Now, what if I told you guys they make a lot of money off of them? That wouldn't surprise you, right? What if I told you they make a lot of money off of our creditors? That wouldn't surprise you either. What if I told you they sold your information as well? So a lot of you know that. So what if I told you that you don't owe them anything? They just report what's being told about you. And then more importantly, though, what if I told you that they are, though, governed by the law, the Fair Credit Reporting Act? And so even though that's pretty much, you know, their mantra, they are just out there as neutral repositories. They just say what they're being told. That's it. How many of you guys have looked at your credit report in the last year? How about the last six months? How about every month? Okay, when y'all leave here today, because I didn't see enough hands. <laughs> I want to make sure that you are looking at your credit report on a regular basis. 80% of the information that these guys say about you is wrong. Yes. Yeah. It's absolutely wrong. I met a lady who told me I've never looked at my credit report, and she said that if you looked at the year that she was born, she was in her 50s. I'm 46, she was in her 50s. She told me she had never looked at her credit report. I said, She said, and then I found out that my ex-husband bought a car. Okay, not surprised. You know, that happens. Jacked up. <laughs> so the ex-husband bought, bought a car, but what was bad is that he didn't pay it. So he had a, so he was repossessed. Now it wasn't so bad that he bought the car or that the car was repossessed. The problem was he bought it in her name. <laughs> but because she had never looked at her credit report, she had no idea. So this happened two years ago. So I said, listen, here's the good news and the bad news. The good news is for the last two years, you haven't wanted to kill him because you didn't know. <laughs> so for two years, you've been living your life. You weren't stressed out, you weren't upset, because you had no idea that you owned a car and it was repossessed. So, moral to the story, I want you all to look at your credit report at least every year. How many of you all have ever heard of annualcreditreport.com? That is truly the only free place that you can get your credit report. Not the little guy playing a banjo, not freecreditreport.com. Those places are not free. They will charge you for monitoring. So the place you can get it for free is at annualcreditreport.com. Write it down. Go get it tomorrow. You're entitled to one free one every 12 months, unless you get denied. So when you get denied for credit, what do you do? You get frustrated, we ball up that piece of paper, and we go to the trash, right? You should be shredding, like you. You should shred, but you should also read it, because it says there that if you were denied for credit, the credit bureau that furnished your information that that decision was rendered from, you are entitled to a free credit report. 
So even if you had your free will, you would get it. Okay? That's the credit bureau. Now, how many of you guys understand also that every creditor does not have to report information to the credit bureau? They don't have to. And as a matter of fact, credit unions, car financial companies, a lot of times you'll find them just reporting on one. So that's why it's important to look at all three. If you're in a maintenance mode, what I mean by that is you have good credit. I'm going to teach you today how to make sure you keep it though. But you have good credit. You may not have to get all three of them. At one time, you have 12 months. So I want you to get one every quarter. And then over the course of the 12 months, you look across all three of your bureaus. Okay? Because again, the creditors do not have to report information to the credit bureaus. So you may look at Experion and look at TransUnion and get surprised. Hopefully pleasantly surprised that there are some positive accounts that are on there. All right? So credit bureaus, not consumer advocates. They make a lot of money off you. And by the way, when you dispute, they make money off that too. So a lot of people think that all of these millions of disputes that are going on right now, that the credit bureaus, it's an it's a expense to them. It's a profit to them. So they love it. All right? Let's talk about some numbers. Here are five factors of an element of your credit score. Your credit score, a couple of things I want you to understand. Your credit score changes every time something is reported, especially if something is reported negatively. So you could pull your credit report this morning. I am Chris and Company, billion dollar company. I'm extending credit to you, and I just report this afternoon that you missed a payment last week. <coughs> right, so I'm reporting it this afternoon. You pulled your report this morning. So tomorrow morning, when someone else comes to pull your report, guess what? You just lost about 100 points. Got that? Your credit report, your score does not stay the same for 30 days. People think that it stays the same and is waiting for someone to ask for it. It doesn't work that way. As soon as someone pushes a request button, all the information that's in that database at that moment in time is used to calculate your score. Okay? This is why people who have good credit need to listen very carefully the next couple of slides I'm going to go Because it's not hard to listen. Okay, we're going to keep moving. <laughs> I know that's on tape. You'd be like, what happened in that during that time? All right, so let's talk about the five fa factors that are used to calculate your score. So this pie chart is nice and pretty. You see the big red one? That's the big one. That's payment history. It's 35% of your score. Balance is owed. It's 30% of your score. Uh, inquiries type of credit and length of credit make up the other 35. We're going to talk about them in detail now. Got it? So what is the 35%? This is good or bad. This is very important to understand. So it doesn't matter whether it's positive accounts or whether they're negative accounts. And what makes a negative account? One missed payment. That's it. So people have called me up and said, I think Anthony said something uh, last week. <laughs> he said, I can't understand. I've had good credit. What is going on? You know, I missed one payment. This is not the bank, guys. There's no deposits made, so you can make a withdrawal. Creditors don't care how long you've had positive payment history. If you miss one payment, you can lose about 100 points, depending on your profile. And get this, when you started off with good credit, they actually penalize you more than someone who's had a couple of you know hiccups along the way. Because they think that you should have known that. Fair. So, still got to understand. So, 35% payment history, late payments, charge-offs, collections, bankruptcies, all those things fall into payment history, right? That's what makes a good or a bad account, just if we miss a payment at the end of the day. Some other things we're going to talk about. So, recent 30-day late can drop your score. I've seen 100 points. 50 to be on the safe side, but everybody's profile is different. So I could miss a payment, Eva could miss a payment, I lose 30, she lost 10. Or, you know, so we just never know. Right? So how about those collections? Do we know what they are? I everybody have to get answer. <laughs> so let me just tell you, a collection basically is an account that we didn't pay. Period. So the particular creditor that we owe decided to hire someone or they sold it to another agency to come after us. So if anyone, not y'all, I know, but if your friends, <laughs> any of your friends are having challenges with debtors and you want to get the top 25 things that they do to break the law, let uh, Mr. Stewart know.
so that I can send that out to you. And I have a good attorney. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because that's what it's about. Get your money back. It's a thousand dollar infraction of having a law. It's a thousand dollar fine if they break the law. So you need to know what the law is. If you don't know what the law says, you don't know if they're breaking it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to get that list of debtors dose, let us know. We'll be happy to send it out to you. So in bold, the very last statement, I don't like to really say it, but I know in reality that there are people who get divorced. <laughs> It just happens, unfortunately. I, I, um, so a divorce decree has nothing to do with the creditor. Because I hear this too many times. But he was supposed to pay it according to the judge. She was supposed to pay it according to the judge. Your creditors don't give a hootie what the judge says. Your creditors care that you entered into a joint account and they want their money. Okay. Um, I did. I do have a CD also called Credit and Divorce. So if you know some folks that potentially not are thinking about it, because divorce is something you, you know, marriage is something you don't get out of alive, right? Y'all agree with me? Right. You're supposed to be in that thing until you pass away. That's right. But other people who may not view it that way, they better know how to protect themselves before and after the honeymoon. So we'll just leave it at that. So let them know that they need to take care of those things because creditors don't care about divorce decrees. Amount owed. What if I told you guys that the credit card companies, when they sent your credit card out and you were excited that you got your approval, we're not talking about the pre-approvals that come in the mail. Thank goodness they changed those. They used to give you pre-approvals that look like credit cards. Do y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Well, folks used to take them to the store. <laughs> that, was, that was a slight problem. You're not really approved. Remember I told you that the credit bureaus sell your information? Well, guess what? You were just a profile. They sold your information. We own the mortgage company. We used to buy a list. And I would buy a marketing list from the credit bureaus for anyone who was interested in buying a home. So I would call and you all thought I, you heard from God. It's like, oh my gosh, everybody's calling me. How do they know I want to buy a house? Because we pay for it. And that's what we do. So that's what the credit bureaus do. They're actually selling your information. So when you get those solicitations in the mail, you really are not pre-approved. You have to still apply. They just, they bought your information. You're in a pile with everybody else that they're trying to get you to do something. So, anyway, credit card company. They send you out your credit card. Do you read the terms and conditions? There's something special about you. <laughs> I don't. Anybody, you all don't read the terms and conditions? Do you think that they told you that if they gave you a $1,000 limit, you're supposed to only charge about $300? Did they tell you that in the terms and conditions? No. Ain't nobody gonna tell you that. Because what they want you to do, if you have a thousand dollar credit limit, they want you to charge a thousand and one dollars. Doesn't that sound more like it? They want you to be over the limit. That's all the information is in the terms and conditions. But I'm here to tell you that balance owed is thirty percent of your credit score. So right about now, people start to calculate in their head how much did they owe on their credit card. Some of y'all doing that right now. I'm going to be honest. Most people are doing that, right about that. And when I tell you that your credit card balances that you're carrying should be no more than 30% of the limit. So if I'm a credit card and I gave you a $100 limit, you should not owe me more than $30 a month. Does it matter if you pay it off every month? Or you should just never have, like if you if you have a balance that's over 30% that you pay your you pay in full every month. Does that still have a negative? Do you have American Express? Well, this is another credit card. Not a regular card. So if you pay your credit card off every month, you are a deadbeat. What That's happened? To the credit card company. <laughs> <laughs> the credit card company. Y'all are like, what? The credit card company say you are a deadbeat because you don't owe them anything. There's no finance charges. You're a deadbeat. They love it when you pay their very, very minimum or less. Here's the reality when it comes to your credit, though. It does matter. You need to leave a little bit on there, about 1% to 2%. But when you get to 30% of the limit is where it starts to negatively affect your score. So you're looking at your credit cards and you're thinking about the limits that I have and the balances that I owe. Don't panic, right? Look at the smallest gap first and work your way on that one. If you at least get it to 50% of the limit, you want to make a, a, a positive impact to your credit score. If you get it to 40, it's going to be even better. When you get it down to 30, you're going to be good. I like to see 1 to 2%, but sometimes that's a miracle, especially in today's economy because a lot of people live off credit. You got it? So as it relates to your credit, though, I want to just teach you that. 30% is the magic number. So the old, I don't hear this a lot, but I used to hear this, 
that people would consolidate credit cards. You all ever done that? Or people told you that? You know, get rid of all these credit cards and consolidate them. That only works from a credit perspective. I'm not teaching on credit. It works if you have a very high limit. So if you consolidate all your cards, but you got a $10,000 limit and your combined balance is less than $3,000, you're fine. But if you consolidate it and now you're maxed out, or above 50% is maxed out, then it's going to negatively affect your score. Got it? So credit cards can be your worst enemy or your best friend. You've got to know how to work. But they work very differently than any other credit account. Okay? Um, Let's talk about length of credit. This is basically how long have you had credit established? Did you just open up an account last year? Have you had credit for the last 10 years? It does matter. People have said to me, I got all this stuff on my credit report, this positive good stuff. I just don't want to have it on there anymore. So how can I get this off? So you can imagine my first question is trying to determine is it good or bad? That's it, right? There's no gray areas, no in between. If it's good credit, I don't care if you've had it for 35 years. I don't care if you have 25 pages. It doesn't hurt you. So if you have all good credit and it's aged, leave it alone. It does not negatively affect your score. Now, if you've got 25 pages of negative stuff, we gotta check. Okay? It's a totally different ballgame. But it does matter. Don't ever, you know, delete or dispute anything that you've had for a long time that helps you. That's 15% of your score. Got it? We'd like to see about 24 months. How many of you all have uh, young adults? And you all have old adults. <laughs> I want to go about the adults. I had somebody tell me the other day, his daughter is four. Four, that child's four. He said, Chris, he said, Chris. He said, Chris. I don't say who he is because he doesn't know. But anyway, he said, Chris, um, I'm going to get a credit card in my daughter's name. <laughs> I said, really? He said, yeah, because you, you, know, you teach us that we have to establish credit for our children. I said, your child not even in elementary school yet. That's borderline fraud. I said, have you ever heard of people getting, you know, phones and then they utilities? Yeah, yeah. That is fraud. Fool. <laughs> I mean, I put this on the table. Anyway, um, I'm not talking about your babies. I'm talking about your young adults. So, you all ever heard of authorized users? So when your children, because if they come see me, I don't care how he's shaking his head already. I didn't say cosign, and I said authorized users. Now, because if someone comes to me, I don't care if you are 24 or 44. If you do not have credit established, I'm going to tell you go ask your parents to add you on as an authorized user. This is the best gift that you can give a young adult. If I have a 26 years old, year old, that boy probably got more money than I do. I put him on my American Express when he was a teenager. I taught him not only how to use credit, pay his bills, because y'all know every month I gave him a copy of his bill, and I made him pay me back. I told him how to do that. So when he got to college, and Citibank, because you know y'all, they use it in France. Do y'all know that? So when you went to college, and you opened up, or somebody approached you about a credit card, was it your friend? Y'all didn't have that? Oh, well, they do now. So they'll get, they'll hire their friends. That's their job. And so their friends will go and approach your, your babies, because it's their friend. It's cool, I'm helping out my friend. So if we don't teach them about credit before they get to the campus, they're lost. So my son called me and said, Mom, this person wants me to open up. I said, open it up. Time to establish your own. But at least he called me. He knew about it. I got a 23-year-old <clears throat> just graduated from Morehouse two years ago. It'll be two years in May. How many of y'all know that he just got his card? He's been on here since he was in, since he was in high school. He didn't get that card, though. Because he, he ain't quite learned like his brother. So y'all have to know your children. You don't have to give them the card, but if you add them on as an authorized user, you are helping them to establish credit. If you don't trust them, keep the card at home. Don't give it to them, because they can be crazy. I got a call from America Express. The lady said, uh, uh, Cameron, on his account, there's a $1,500 uh, attempted charge at Best Buy. Oh, Do you think that he there's a fraud issue? I said absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> she said, she said do you, do you, can you contact him? I said, ma'am, there is no need to come. My son is not crazy. There's no need for me to contact him. He did not try to charge up $1,500 for my He's not crazy. Close his card, open up, you know, a fraud. So by the time I woke him up at 1030, I said, baby, 
Where's my breakfast breast? Oh, Mom, where are you Mom. Mom. Bruce waking up. Mom. I said, what's Tim there? Get your butt up. You know? <laughs> so he said, Mom, I got the card. 